The following video is supported by partners and associates of Joy Christian Ministries. Turn with me, if you will, to Joshua chapter 6. I'm not going to ask you to stand tonight because I'm going to be reading quite a bit. But Thank you. Joshua chapter 6 tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to read this whole chapter tonight. Those of you that are already looking at it are probably thinking, oh goodness, I'm going to read the whole book to us tonight. But um, the reason I want to read this whole chapter tonight is because there's just so much information that I don't want us to miss. Sure. And so just bear with me tonight. I've got a lot of scripture. I've got a lot of scripture throughout this message tonight. But I just want us to dive in and, and get everything that God has for us. So in Joshua chapter 6, when you find it, say amen. 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 <laughs> Starting in verse 1, it says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, yep. its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Uh -huh. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with yeah. a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city. Let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until... The day that I say to you, shout, yeah. then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp, and Joshua rose early in the morning. And the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord, went on continually and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So did six. So they did six days. Yes. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early, about the dawning of the day, and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only, they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened, yep. I want you to get this tonight, church. When the priests blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Yes. Verse 17, Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction. It and all who are in it, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that were sent. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. 
So the people shouted when the priests blew trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said to the two men who had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and from there bring out the woman and all that she has, as you swore to her. Verse 23, And the young men, who had been spies, went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. Now notice that now, now it's saying the camp of Israel. Uh -huh. It did belong to the Canaanites, but now it's saying they brought them out of the camp of Israel. We're going to get into some of that in a few minutes, but I want you to kind of pay attention to that. Verse 24, But they burned the city and all that was in it with fire. Only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua was spared Rahab the harlot, her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua was sent to spy out Jericho. Then Joshua charged them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this city Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn, and with his youngest he shall set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout all the country. And finally, we got through all that chapter. But I just want to minister for a few moments tonight, church, as probably should be obvious, the walls of Jericho. Hallelujah. The walls of Jericho. Help me pray tonight, if you will. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We thank you, mighty God, for the power that you are moving in this place tonight, God. Yes, I feel Lord. your presence upon me, Lord. Hallelujah. And I thank you for it, God, for I cannot do without it, Lord. I just pray that you'll anoint all of us to receive the things yes, that you Lord. have for us tonight, God, through your yes. word. Yes, Lord. And God, let it go forth and just shake us up and stir us tonight, God. Granted. And Lord, we give all the praise for tonight and ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Everybody said amen. 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 Hallelujah. amen, church. This is a very powerful story. When you begin to start reading the book of Joshua, the first six chapters going into the seventh chapter, all of Joshua is great, but these first six or seven chapters are just, oh man, you'll talk about powerful. I'm going to break some of this down tonight, but for an introduction, I want to kind of give you a history of Joshua. The name Joshua actually simply means God is my salvation. I don't know if you knew that or not, but sometimes Jesus was even referred to the name of Joshua, which is comes from the word Yeshua or Yeshua. Right. And it just simply means salvation, or God is my salvation. And so the name Joshua, to be able to have the name Joshua, was very proud thing. He's talking about you didn't like your name growing up, you know, until you found out that, you know, James in the Bible. Well, see, Joshua had one of them names. Uh -huh. That just from the get-go was like, man, that's a name to have right there. Yeah. So his name means God is my salvation. And so when we go back a little bit and we look at under being under Moses. The nation of Israel followed Moses for 40 years. And during them 40 years, God delivered them from the slavery in Egypt. He disciplined them in the wilderness and brought them to the land He promised their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was during this time that Joshua served as one of the 12 spies that explored the land. When he was under the, you know, the leadership of Moses. And... Um, after the death of Moses, we see that Joshua was commissioned to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. And God used Joshua to fulfill his promise to Abraham that the land of Canaan would belong to his descendants. We'll go back to Joshua chapter 1 verse 6 real quick. It says, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. And so this land that we... No, as the land of Canaan or the promised land, it was promised to those people that were going to get it. Yes. And it took a long time before they finally got it. But as God promises, so shall He give. Amen. When God Amen. makes a promise to us, church, yeah. it might not come to pass as when we want it to, but somewhere along the way, God's promises will be fulfilled in our lives. Absolutely. Yes. It's truly of the Lord. Yes. Now sometimes we think that we hear a promise from the Lord and maybe it wasn't God at all. And we sit back and we wonder why we never see those things fulfilled. Well, it could be that maybe it wasn't from God to begin with. But you can rest assured, though, 
That if it is truly a promise of the Lord, it will come to pass Amen. in your life. Amen. Whether it's one that He has given you personally, or whether it's the promises of this Word, it will come to pass. Because that's who God is, and He stands on His promises. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to God, church. Amen. And so, nearly 700 years, give or take, after God had promised Abraham this big promise that we're speaking of tonight, Joshua leads the conquest to take Jericho, bringing us to our text tonight, where we read the opening text. Yes. Nearly 700 years, God made this promise to Abraham somewhere, give or take, around 2100 B.C. And this conquest to uh, Jericho was 700 years after that. And so you think about 700 years today, well, that seems like a lifetime to us, and it is. Yes. But back then, 700 years probably wasn't nothing to them because, they, I mean, they lived longer back then and just things were different. The Lord says that one year to Him is like a thousand years, you know. So, I mean, who knows how it was, you know, looked at back then. But 700 years to me is a very long time. And so to wait on a promise for this long, you know, would almost discourage most people. But to be able to see it fulfilled, all right. Many generations yes. later. Yes. It's such a powerful thing for us to be able to reflect back on tonight. Right. And so I'm going to get into this taking Jericho. But I'm going to read some a lot of scripture tonight. You, you can turn there with me if you want to. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 1, actually. I'll just let you read some of this with me tonight. We're going to try to get into this. Might teach a little bit tonight. Might preach a little bit tonight. Right. But there's definitely a message I feel like the Lord wants us to get tonight. Yes. Amen. Amen. In Joshua chapter 1, beginning with verse 1, says, After the death of Moses, this is where God begins to commission Joshua, begins to call Joshua to start heading towards Jericho. And we're going to read some of this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, speaking of Joshua, it, or speaking of Moses here, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. And, and the pastor actually started reading some of this this morning. And I'm thinking, man, he's, he's preaching this message now. <laughs> so it must have just been ordained by God for us to be here tonight. Amen. 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 But in verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, yes. I have given you. Yes. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness... And this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the high tides, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. Well, we heard that before, church. Yep. We know that, right? That's what Jesus yeah. said. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. And so we see the commission. Listen, this territory is theirs. All you got to do is just go get it. <laughs> I want you to start getting this. God is giving you the land, but... You have to possess it. All right. See, God has a land for us to, to gain. He's given it to us freely. Just here you go. But see, it's up to us to possess this land. See, God, God can lay it all out for us, and He does. But He leaves it up to us to possess it. Yes. And that's what He's saying. Listen, in nine verses, we read one through nine, in nine verses, five different times the Lord told Joshua not to fear. Uh-huh. Yeah. In a roundabout way. Even yeah. in, he, he said four times God told Joshua that the land was theirs to gain. So four different times within these nine verses he said, listen, this is your land. 
This is your land. Uh -huh. Four times. Four times God told Joshua that he was there for him. Four times God's telling him, listen, I, I'm with you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm here. And so repetitively, God was saying a few different things over and over again. And the biggest one was that he was with him. No matter what, I'm with you. It's okay. Don't be afraid. That's the second best one. But then the fact that he continuously told them, this is your land. Yeah. This is your land. I already. This is your land. And then four times he said that to Joshua. Joshua, verse 1, 10 through 11. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, Oh yeah, this is, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm trying to hurry up and get to the good parts, church. <laughs> but no, my point is, is God is giving us promises in this life. And yeah, he's talking about the promised land here, you know. We have heaven to gain, but, but I'm talking about just any of the blessings or any of the promises of the Lord right. are for us to gain. Yes, yes, they are. But it's up to us to possess it. Right. I mean, it's already there. We just got to reach out our hand and take it. Amen. And there are some things that we're going to have to go through in order to gain the blessings and the promises of the Lord. Uh -huh. Sometimes we're going to have to cross some Jordans and we're going to get to this. We have to cross some rivers sometimes to get to that promised land where God to get to those things that God wants for us. Oh, okay. And so the next thing that we come to is, is it's time to cross the Jordan. Joshua verse 1, I'm getting ready to read this. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves. For within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Yes. And so the promises of God oftentimes is from point A to point B. And I really want us to get this tonight, church. Sometimes we try to make a huge big thing out of something so small and something so simple. Uh -huh. Sometimes what God has for you is literally from here at point A what God has for you is at point B. It's right there. Right. But we make it as if we're at point A and, and, and the things that God has for us is, is at point Z. Uh -huh. You know, using that as an example. You know, uh -huh. and, and it seems like it's just forever away and that's not the case. The things that God has for us is oftentimes it's just from here to here. It's right there. Uh -huh. And sometimes the only thing that's separating us from getting there might be like this River Jordan that we're speaking of tonight. We are on one side and our promise is on the other. Yeah. And this river, speaking of where they're at right here, was what was separating them from their promise. This river Jordan. Well, you know what, church? We've got some rivers sometimes we've got to cross in this life. Right. Yes. You get what I'm saying tonight? Yes, amen. Can you amen. see that in the spiritual realm? Right. Yeah. We've got some rivers sometimes that we have to cross. We're standing on this side of the river and our promise is over there. Uh -huh. Now, it's not that far off, but yet there's something that's keeping us from getting to that place. Yes. Sometimes we just got to cross the river, church. Right. It's not that big of a deal. We just got to cross the river. All right. But see, oftentimes the devil, and we're going to see what God does in this river here in a few moments, but before we ever get to that place where it's time to cross that river, to get to our promises, to get to our blessings, to get to that destination where God wants us to be, before we even get to that crossing point, we're already allowing things to rise up in us to make us fear, to make us doubt, to make us wonder. Well, I see it. I can see it over there. Boy, it sure looks pretty from here. I bet it looks good when, it's, when you're actually there. But how am I going to get across this river? I, there's just no way. I mean, look how, look how rough this river looks. I mean, that water is going through pretty quick. It probably knocked me off my feet. I might get swept away. And we already begin to start seeing the issue in front of us. Instead of just making up our minds that, you know what? God has told us that that is our land over there. God has told me that that is my area over there to possess that belongs to us. And this is the only way to get to it is to cross this river. So if he's given it to us, and obviously this river ain't that big of a deal. Amen. But we oftentimes make this river that we've got to cross. And it's like, I'm using this river as an example because that's what they had to cross, church. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm connecting it to spiritual things here. It might not be an actual literal river. It might be some kind of obstacle in our life. It uh -huh. might be some kind of you know, situation or right. circumstance right. rising up that's right. keeping us from entering over that promised land area. Uh -huh. But sometimes we get to that, that river in our life and we're already defeated when we get there. We're already, we've already defeated before we even get to it. Because we're already beginning to think in our mind, what's, 
How are we going to get across this? How are we going to get to that destination? There's no way. Well, you see, the Bible says where there seems to be no way, God makes a way. All right. yeah. yes. That's what the Word says. Amen. And so, we're going to see what happens here as they begin to start crossing this river. Because no doubt, many of them, there were several of these people that was there. It wasn't just Joshua and a couple right. of the sidekicks. There were several people. So, no doubt, somebody, at least one person, was thinking those things. Oh, my God, how do you expect us to cross this river, Joshua? Uh-huh. You know, I believe in you. I believe that God is using you, and I, I trust in your leadership. But you know what? This, how are we going to cross this river? Yeah. I'm sure somebody thought that. Yeah. I'm sure fear began to rise up in somebody. I don't care how spiritual you think you are tonight. Fear will sometimes show its ugly head in your life. Yes. You know? yeah. And tries to trip you up even before you get to that place. Uh-huh. Yes. And so I'm sure that that was in the thoughts of somebody's mind. But here's what the Lord does, man. And this is powerful. Behold the ark of the covenant of the Lord. All the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. Now therefore take for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel. One man from every tribe. And it shall come to pass. Say, come to pass. Come to pass. Aren't you glad that within the word it will say, it shall come to pass. Amen. No matter what it is you might be going through at this very moment, it will come to pass as long as the Lord Jesus Christ is involved in your life. Amen. Amen. And it says, it will come to pass as soon as the soles of your feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. How many of you know tonight that the God that we serve, He's a way maker? All right. Oh, yeah. He makes yeah. ways where there seems to be no way. Yeah. He produces a, a, a way across the river. He produces a way through the obstacles of life. Yeah. He's always making a way somehow. Yeah. Amen. What the natural mind can't begin to even fathom, God has already made a plan. Yeah. He's already made a way. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And so the same God that parted the Red Sea for Moses when he was leading is the same God that is stopping the flow of the river for Joshua as he's leading the children of Israel. Uh-huh. Amen. And it says as the priests, 12 tribes of Israel, as they step their feet into oh, the water, yeah, yeah. carrying the ark of the Lord, which represents the presence of the living God. As soon as they step in there, because they held the presence. Uh-huh. I said, because they hold the presence. Yes, the presence of the Lord made a way. Yes. And that water began to stop and it began to clear up. And all them strong rapids that was coming in, and it seemed like they was going to sweep them off of their feet. It all began to come to a stopping point. And they was able to keep on going. All right. The same way that Moses experienced yes. in that yes. Red Sea yes, when it parted and everything got out of the way. Yes, sir. And as they finally made it through, remember? Yeah. They closed back up and the people that was chasing them was washed away. Right. That's the God that we serve. Yeah. And so the same yeah. God yes. Thank you. parted this, or, or parted, he, he stopped the flow of this river Piled it up. that Joshua was leading the children of Israel to. You see, when you come to your river, whatever it may be in your life, Whatever the obstacle is, whatever the circumstances, when you come to that, don't walk up to it defeated church. Don't already make up your mind that, well, this is impossible, we can't do it. Because I promise you, God will stop the flow of that river so you can get across. All right. Amen. He'll move the obstacles out of the way. Yeah. He'll fix the circumstances. Amen. He'll remove the situation. Whatever it is that He has to do, He'll do it. Yes, so that will. way you can keep on going yeah. through and get to the destination that yeah. God wants you to be. Amen. 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 That's the God that we serve, church. All right. Amen. Well, I feel yeah. the Holy Ghost in this place, Amen. church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Great God. When God is leading you to a destination... He will make a way for you to get there. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. And then this is what we have to look at after that, after things like this happened. That was a miracle that they experienced, church. Yes. yes. Nothing short of it. It was a miracle from the Lord. Yes, it was. Because that is not, not natural. That's not just something, I mean, that don't happen. Just normal things. Right. Only the hand of God could cause such a thing to take place. See, see, some things that we go through in this life, no human, you know, natural thing is going to stop it. Only the hand of God can sometimes intervene to stop these things. Amen. Amen. I said only the hand of God. Yes, amen. 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 We oftentimes try to put our hands in the midst of it. We try to come up with a technique or some type of way to get around things. 
And sometimes we, we're not able to do it, church. That's right. Many times we're not able to do That's it. Right. It's going to take the miracle working power of God to get us through our rivers yes, sometimes yes, in this yes, life. Yes. Amen. And I love what I'm getting ready to read to you. Because I feel like, I'll just say it in a general context so I don't get in trouble. When God works miracles in our life, we, me too, need to be more quick to tell the world what God has just done. Oh yeah. We need to make a memorial of the miracles of God. Yeah. We need to shout out our testimonies about what God is doing. Amen. We don't Amen. need to just hold them for ourselves. And we're going to see what God required of them to do next. And it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan that the Lord spoke to Joshua. The Lord has spoke this to him. It's not something that Joshua just said, well, maybe we should do what I'm getting ready to read. Maybe we should just do this. No, the Lord said to do this. Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, yeah. from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place for your lodge tonight. And, and I'm going to skip on down to verse 20. And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before Hallelujah. you until you had crossed over it, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, yes. which he dried up before us until we had crossed over it. That all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you may fear the Lord, your God, forever. Amen. God told them, listen, where I just performed this miracle out over here in this river, go back to that place and find you 12 different stones, one for each tribe yeah. that represents the children of Israel. Right. And you carry these stones over here, bring them to your lodging place, and then I'm going to have you set these up in Gilgal for a memorial of the miracle that I did for yeah, you. Yeah. That way, when the generations come down years later, they'll be able to see this and you can tell them, oh yeah, that's when God did this. All right. That's when God dried that river up so we can cross it. Uh -huh. Hey, whenever God performs a miracle in your life, I don't care if you're standing in the grocery store, I don't care if you're standing in the doctor's office, I don't care if you're sitting out down an old oak tree. Don't forget to make some kind of a memorial for yourself and for others to say, hey, whenever I was here, God did this. Uh -huh. Amen. That way your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and their friends and whoever can rise up and say, Grandpa, what, what's this here represent? Uh -huh. Well, you know what? I made this right here to remind me and whoever else. That at one time in my life, God did this right here for yeah. me. It was a true miracle from God. Yes, it was. Yeah. Really, Grandpa? God did that? And see, what that does is that sows a seed of belief and faith. Really? That's what God can do? Right. Really? Interest starts beginning to rise up in them. Really? I want to know more about this God. Right. Uh -huh. And it says that the people might know the mighty hand of God and fear Him forever. Amen. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, it is. We all need the fear of the Lord, church. No, not to be afraid of Him as if He's going to, you know, zap us. For, that's not that kind of... It's, it's, it's reverence. Yeah. It's, it's respect. That's the kind of fear we're supposed yes. to have for the Lord, church. Amen. But miracles along the way. As you journey, don't forget to share the miracles of the Lord that helped you along your way. Right. See, God brings us miracles to help us in this life. Yes, He does. Amen. We don't just get miracles just for the sake of having miracles. He brings us miracles because they are our great help to us. Absolutely. See, the children of Israel and Joshua and all that, they, they needed that kind of a miracle. Because if it wasn't for the miracle of God stopping the flow of that river, there was no other way around it. They, they couldn't have got to the place that God wanted them to be. So God had to intervene. Listen, there's things in this life that you'll never accomplish unless the miracle working power of God right. shows up and yes, helps amen. you get to that point. Right. Yes, amen. 
And don't ever look at, listen, some, some miracles come in small packages, or what we would consider a small package, or big in the eyes of the Lord. And so not every miracle is just going to just, just, you know, those heavens aren't just going to open up and, 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 you know, the skies part and the glory flies. It's not that. It don't, it don't always come that way, church. Right. It can. Right. Some, some miracles come in very small little packages. But it's still a miracle of the Lord. Amen. You know that a baby being born is a miracle of the oh, Lord? Oh, yeah. Yes. Amen. See, we take that for granted. We just get so caught up in ourselves. Well, me and my, well, whoever. Made that baby. You know, that, that's what we did. And they, they they completely put off that this is of God. Yeah, now, some of them are born in sin. You know, born the wrong way because of not, you know, being in the holy, you know, formula that God set for us people on this earth, you know. Right. I'm speaking of the marriage bonds, church. Right. So some people are born in, in, in the sin that way. But nevertheless, God is still the creator. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is. I was born in sin. I'm sorry, Mom. I wasn't born the right way. But look what God has transformed me into today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I've come a long ways. Yeah. I'm still by far, I haven't apprehended. But look how far I've come. Uh -huh. You know, so, so I'm not saying that for that reason, church, but, but we need to really consider the miracles of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to not just brush them off as if they're nothing. Yeah. We need to remember them. Rem remember them. If I can speak tonight, church. Because those things are what helps us get through in this life, church. Yes, amen. So that others may know the mighty hand of God. Amen. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 5. I'm going to read a few more scriptures here. I'm, I'm really laying a foundation to get to one specific point tonight. I want to give you the back history of everything that's going on up to this point that I'm trying to bring to you. <coughs> Joshua chapter 5. So it was when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel yes. until we had crossed over, that their heart melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives for yourselves and circumcise the sons of Israel. Again, The second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the reason why, and I want you to really listen to this right here. Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness on the way mm -hmm. after they had come out of Egypt. Yes. For all the people who came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of the Egypt had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. Right. To whom the Lord swore that He would not show them the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons, whom he raised up in their place, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not been circumcised on the way. So it was, when they had finished circumcising all the people, that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, This day, and I want you to really focus on this, this day, this is the Lord speaking, I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. And that word Gilgal just literally means circle of stones. But I want to talk about this circumcision for a minute. It represents the old covenant church. The people here, Joshua had to circumcise. This is the second generation. Right. You notice it said that the, the first had died off. Yes. And these were the sons of the these are the second generation. We see, and I'm going to read some of this out of Genesis here in a minute to give you a, a better understanding. But the only way to enter into the old covenant 
was through circumcision. And I'm not going to explain circumcision tonight, church, because most of us should know what it is. But that was a Jewish custom back then. Yes. yes. You know, and, and I understand that, that we're in America and our cultures have changed and stuff. Uh, the Jewish still practice this. And, 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 and maybe some of us still do today, I'm sure, you know. Uh, that's not the point. The point is, is the enter into the old covenant back then, the old covenant that was made through Abraham with God, circumcision was the only way to enter into that old covenant. And so seeing as Joshua, this is, I mean, we're still under the old covenant during the time of our text tonight. And so in order for them to enter into this promised land that God has, you know, given them, they first have to be circumcised. They first have to enter into this old covenant with the Lord before God will allow them to go into this land. Now that's deep if you really start thinking about this. I'm going to try to bring some of this out, but turn me to Genesis chapter 17 real quick. I'm going to give you all the details before we move forward on this. Genesis 17. I'm going to start in verse 10. This is the Lord speaking to Abraham during this time right here. He says, this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins. And it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. The Lord speaking this. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generations. He who is born in your house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Yes. And the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people because he has broken my covenant. And so circumcision, this was God speaking to Abraham as he was establishing this covenant with Abraham. Under the old covenant, the only way you could enter into a covenant relationship with God was through circumcision. Now this was, going back to Joshua here, this was to the second generation. Now listen now, we don't have to do these things anymore to enter into the covenant with the Lord, okay? And I'm going to get, I'm going to, get to the new covenant in a minute. But this was speaking to the second generation. This proves to us tonight that just because your daddy or your granddaddy was saved doesn't mean that you're in the clear. Right. You know, you also have to be. You second generation, the third generation, whatever. You also have to enter into the covenant for yourself. Right. It's not clear for you because your daddy and your granddaddy right. and them did. Right. You also have to do it. Amen. And this Amen. is proof of this right here. And it's also proof that our generations need it today. Amen. Amen. It doesn't die out in the wilderness with all the other people. All no, right. we need it today. And so we must enter into this covenant with the Lord. And I'm, I know that we have. Hallelujah. But it's for other people out there in this world today, of our generations, we, they need the, the Lord. They need to enter into this covenant with God. Amen. And it's still a blood covenant, church. Yes, oh, yeah. Yes, amen. And anyone that knows what circumcision is, it's the blood covenant. Yes. And the yes. new covenant is also a blood covenant. Yes, yes. And so when we look at the new covenant... We're speaking of the blood of Jesus, church. In order to enter into this new covenant with the Lord, you must have faith in the blood of Jesus and you must be covered in the blood. We're not going to make it into our promised land without the blood of Jesus, church. Just as much as the children of Israel can't make it into their promised land without that blood covenant that they made with the Lord through circumcision. We have to be in the covenant in order to experience the promise of the Lord. All right. There's many people, oh man, this is a preach right here, church. There's many people Come in this on. life who, who think that they are experiencing the promises and the blessings of God and they're not even in covenant relationship with Him. Now I know it rains on the just and the unjust, but you got to understand something. Now we cannot receive the promises of God without the blood of Jesus. That's right. Amen. We That's right. must be in covenant relationship with Him. Amen. Amen. That's it. And there's many people in this life today who, who they don't get that. They're thinking, well, I'm a child of God. No, you're a creation of God. Right. God has created you and you are His creation. But in order to be a child of God, you must come in through this covenant. Amen. And it's a blood Amen. covenant, church. Amen. Amen. And it's the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 
We must be washed and covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is the only way to enter into a covenant relationship with Him. That word covenant means promise, church. Amen. In order to enter into this promise, with the Lord, it's, it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we know this, church. I know we get this. We're Christians today. That's what it's all about. Yes. There are many people who don't know this. That's right. Yeah. right. There's many people who's trying to enter into this promised land without the blood of Jesus. Uh -huh. Amen. And I'm not trying to beat you guys over the head with this tonight, That's but we got to understand this. That's good word. Those of you that are listening by, by social media, listen, you got to come in through the blood of Jesus Christ. That is the only way. You cannot receive the promises of God outside of the blood of Jesus. All right. Yes. Yep. I'm going to leave that alone now, church. Good word. But we are covenant people. Yes, we are. You know, it's a very powerful thing to have this kind of a covenant with the Lord. When you begin to think of everything that Jesus did for us, to be able to have this connection and this you know, communion with us come today. On, come on. To have this relationship, this promise with Him. Yes. That's not something to be taken lightly. I mean, this is a real thing, you know. Yes, it is. And many of us trample over the blood of Jesus oh, when we begin to get our thinking crossed when it comes to these types of things, church. And we trample the blood of Jesus and we trample over this covenant. And we think that we can inherit what God has for us by any other way that you can imagine other than through the right way and the only way, and that is through the shed blood of the Lamb, who is Christ Jesus Church. Amen. When I start talking about this subject here, it just, you know, it, it, it moves me in a way, you know, and I just, I can't, I can't get away from it. But, All right. But anyway, church, moving on tonight. We're finally able to get to where our text is at tonight, church. This battle of Jericho. So Joshua is probably standing there. And he's probably summarizing everything that is, you know, transpired from, from, from you know, all this. You know, we, we know that the territory is ours to take. He's probably, probably reflecting on these things. Well, we know that the territory is ours to take. We know that God is with us. We know, you know, we've crossed the river. We've, uh, you know, made a memorial of the miracles of God. Right. You know, he's reflecting on these things. We've, we've brought everyone into this covenant with God now. And so he's probably got a little, you know, stone pad with a <laughs> checklist, you know, checking off everything. And he's like, well, listen, we've we, we got all this stuff taken care of. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so now he's probably thinking, well, the only thing left to do now is to proceed on the Jericho. And so that finally brings us to where we need to be. And we finally get to this, this Jericho, this land that at the moment is taken over by the Canaanites. If you, anybody you know anything about the Canaanites, they were a pagan nation. Mm -hmm. They did everything opposite what the Lord wanted them to do. Yes. They worshipped yes. false gods and they you know, caught up in idolatry and they were just pagan in all the ways. Don't get into them Canaanite ways, church. Right. Yeah. Send you to hell tonight. And so they get into this, this city of Jericho. They've been scoping this place out. They've been sending spies to try to figure out, you know, how, how they move, what's going on, you know. They've been doing this for a long time, trying to figure out how, how are we going to get in here? How are we going to take this territory, you know? We know that it's ours, but we, they gotta have, you have to have a plan, church. There's got to be some type of plan. Amen. You know, you can't just walk in there guns blazing, you know, <laughs> so to speak. You gotta have some kind of a, a plan. Amen. Well, what are we gonna do? Well, see, that's when the Lord shows up and He gives you the plan that He wants you to carry right. out. And so I want to look at the walls tonight. The title of my message tonight is The Walls of Jericho. I've, I've, I've talked a little bit about everything tonight. And each one of these things I've talked about can, can be expounded on huge. But just giving you a little brief summary of each little moment leading up to this, church. And this comes to the very core of my message tonight. Talking about the walls of Jericho. And, and this I'm, I'm going to get real spiritual in this, church, hopefully. The walls were the barriers that, that blocked them from getting into where the enemy was. There was no way inside that city except for through them walls. 
I mean, they had soldiers, I mean, everything, you know, just like it would be probably today in a roundabout way. And they couldn't just march into that city because they had walls built up around it. And the only way to get inside to defeat the enemy, to take this territory, was to somehow get through them walls, church. I want us to talk about these walls for a minute. The barriers that block us from the promises of God. You see that territory inside that wall, that city of Jericho, that was the promise of the Lord. I'm going to give you this territory. It's yours. And the walls was the only thing stopping them from getting that promise right there. And so, when we start looking at walls, you start studying out walls. Walls have been used for centuries upon centuries upon centuries to keep things in, to keep things out, to hold up structures. I mean, we have walls all in this church today. I mean, right. and look at all the different angles of walls that we have over here and over there. And, you know, we got big walls over here, you know. And walls is a big part of our life today in the physical sense. Yes, sir. You know, we got walls in our houses right. that separates different rooms. You know, we got walls that separate our personal bedroom from the living room where more people can come in and fellowship. We got a small walls closing in our, our restrooms, uh -huh. places of privacy. Yeah. So walls are very important in that aspect. But see, walls can also be very dangerous. And this is where I want to focus at tonight, church, is the dangers of these types of walls. You see, these walls was what was keeping the children of Israel from taking that city right there. That's the only thing stopping them. They had the manpower. They had God behind them. They could have walked in, and, and they did eventually. But the enemy wasn't the issue, church. It was getting to the enemy. Uh -huh. And the walls was what was stopping them. And so, I'm going to look at some walls tonight. The only thing that we can build up by ourselves, but we can't tear them down by ourselves, and that is walls. And now I'm speaking spiritually and emotionally, church. We all build walls within our lives. I want you to look at the, the emotional side of this, church, and the spiritual side of this. We all build walls in our lives. And sometimes... We build walls because of things that we went through in this life. How do we build walls? Pain. I'm going to read some things off to you. Uh -huh. See if you can relate to any of this. Uh -huh. Trauma. Fear. Shame. Guilt. Regret. Insecurities. Uh -huh. Those are all tools yeah. that we use yeah. to start laying the blocks, yeah. building up walls in our lives. Uh -huh. Well, this person said this to me, so you know what? I'm going to build up a wall against that person to where I can be separated from them. And this group of people over here, they're, they're doing all these kinds of things. I'm going to build up a wall. There's some people that go to the extreme in these types of things. Right. We just had a pretty low blow with our, you know, political realm. Yeah. You know, and I... I'm not here to play politics, church, but, but I was for Donald Trump. I'll just tell you. I don't care to tell you. I was for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. And we start getting into all of the little things about President Biden now coming in, so to speak. Uh -huh. I hate to say that, but I don't care who hears me. I, I'm, I'm allowed to believe who I want to believe in. I'm allowed to vote who I want to vote for, right? Right. 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 But some people will start building up walls. Against things like that. Uh -huh. Oh man, Biden's in there now. Oh, I got to start building up walls. I don't want part of that. And, 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 and you know, I understand. You know, things that we go through in this life are they're they're troubling and they're hard and they're you know cause us to feel certain types of ways. Right. But see, we start building up walls, traumas. There's people that have built walls in their life from a small child because of maybe things they went through as a kid. Physical abuse, and uh -huh. verbal abuse, uh -huh. or whatever, and they start building them walls as uh -huh. a child. And today, as adults, their walls are built so high yeah. that you wouldn't even begin to know how to start getting them taken down. Different trauma, traumatic experiences, uh -huh. you know, and maybe maybe things that we've done in this life that have been wrong. Now we feel shame, mm -hmm. and so now we start building up walls because of our shame and 
Now we feel guilty and we start building up walls because of the guilt that we feel now. Mm -hmm. If I can just block myself away from that, I won't have to maybe feel so much guilt and shame. Uh -huh. We start building walls, church. You never knew that we were brick masons, did you? Uh -huh. But so many of us are, church, we start building walls spiritually and emotionally. And these walls really, you would think, would be good. You think that, I mean, when you think about it, you think, well, what's wrong with having walls? We see these walls I just mentioned is what kept them from taking that territory. Uh -huh. You see, many people are thinking that they are building walls to trap themselves in some, from some place. But that's not what they're doing. They're building walls and they're keeping themselves out of the places that God really wants them to be. I can be that. It's true. And that's, a, and that's the angle I'm going with right. tonight. You know, it'd be easy to think that well, I'm building this wall, I'm going to shut myself in this wall right here, and nothing else can get me. And, and then that might be the case too. But see, when you do that, you shut yourself out too from being where God wants you to be. Right, right. See, God never called us to shut ourselves in. He never called us for that. He, he didn't want to keep us out of the things that He has for us. Right. We do that for ourselves. Uh-huh, that's good. Good right there. And so, these walls of Jericho, were the only thing keeping Israel from defeating the enemy inside. As the enemy was consumed by the walls that was around them. As the children of Israel was on the outside trying to get in to take their territory. <coughs> the enemy inside was keeping them from taking their territory. And so the walls that we build we build up walls around what we view as our enemy. That's how I want to look at it tonight. <coughs> and we, see, we see many different things as the enemy today. We might look at people as enemy. We might look at places as an enemy to us. We might look at, you know, objects in this life, materialistic things. We, we might just view a lot of different things as an enemy to us. Because that has caused me pain and and, and that person has caused me pain, and this place has caused me pain, and, and this and that, whatever, all these things, and I had a traumatic experience over here with this. And so we view a lot of different things as our enemy in this life. And so we build up walls around it. And see, God wants us to defeat our enemies. He don't want us just to build up walls around them. He wants us to defeat those enemies. All right. Because if we never defeat those enemies, then really we've just been walking around in a maze for the rest of our life. A maze is something that's got many walls in the church. That's what in my notes. That's pretty good. We start thinking about a maze. Well, if you don't know the path, you're, you're going to just keep bumping into things. You're not going to figure out how to get through. Right. Well, see, we start setting up so many walls in this life that we can't even remember the way out. Yeah. Oh, man, I preach. After so many years of doing it, we've set up so many walls that we've created a maze all around us and we can't even remember how to get out. Yep. No matter how hard we try, well, maybe it's this way. Or maybe maybe it's this way over here and we just keep running in to more walls. I didn't even realize this wall was here. When did I put this up? Well, how about this one? And we just start running into all these walls. And that sounds funny tonight, church, but, but boy, if it's ever so real... But God wants us to defeat those enemies that has caused us to want to put walls up instead of just building the walls around the church. Not by murdering the enemy. Now I understand that, that in Jericho they had to kill those people to take that territory. You know That was an actual physical battle. Right. Yeah. But we understand that most of the battles we go through in this life is spiritual and emotional. Very seldom of us, as of now, God forbid we ever have to right. go through physical, <laughs> you know, we might have to now, one day, you know, <laughs> as persecution begins to come and, yeah, you know, yeah. Democrats rise up, right? No, uh, and we say that, we, I mean, we, we joke about those things, church, but in all sincerity, we have no idea, you know, what, what's to come before Jesus comes here, even in America. Amen. Amen. You know, and so... Getting to, to the real point, though, he wants God wants us to defeat our enemies not not through murder, not through violence, not through those types of things, right. but through 
but through one way. Anybody know what that is? Go ahead and call it out. Anxiety. No, how do we defeat our enemies? It's all about well, Jesus, brother. Prayer. One Blood. word is what I'm looking for, church. We know it. Blood. Prayer. That's good. Faith. Love, church. Oh, love. Love. Love is the only way to defeat our enemies in this life. I'm going to read you something that our Lord Jesus said. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Mm -hmm. For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. I want you to hear this. And your reward will be great. Yes. Amen. And you will be sons of the Most High. Amen. Daughters too. Mm -hmm. For He is kind to the unthankful. And evil. Speaking of Jesus. Therefore be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Amen. God wants us to love our enemies. Yes. Amen. That's the only way to defeat him. Listen, this is hard stuff right here. We don't like to hear this because, you know, I don't really know personally off the top of my head people that I consider an enemy. There's probably plenty of people that consider me an enemy in this life. Man. You know, but I really don't, I mean, sincerely, I cannot think of one person that I would really just say is an enemy. Now, there's people I don't particularly care for as much as others, maybe. You know, maybe people that, you know, my nerves sometimes or something, I, you know. But to consider them an enemy, I, sincerely, God knows my heart tonight, I really don't know one person that I would actually just consider to be an enemy to me. God. Like I said, they might think opposite of me. But I really, I really don't know. And so, it's hard for me to really, you know, look at it in this manner. But it's the truth either way. Because maybe some of you have enemies. Maybe some of you, as I say that, can probably think of at least one person that maybe, maybe you consider enemy. I don't know. That's, I mean, it's not my business. I mean, that's between you and God. But regardless of whether you've got enemies or not, we're called to love our enemies. All right. Amen. And it's not an easy thing to do. I can't imagine how... How you know how hard it might be, church? You know because someone that is considered an enemy is someone that you just probably pretty well want to just write off, and if you could, you kill them or whatever. I don't know how extreme you might be tonight, church. And I'm being real tonight because when I think of an enemy, I look at it on a national level. Countries that have come against our country, you know, like Adolf Hitler was an enemy to oh, me. Man. Yeah. That that would have been a, that would have been an enemy. But see, that's on a grand scale, church. But as far as personal, I don't know. I really don't know, church. And and, and I guess that's for me and the Lord to decide, just as it would be between you and the Lord to decide on your own personal things. But we're called to love those enemies. Yes. And the love that we try to push out and give is what will defeat that enemy. And not defeat them in a way of well, they'll be just destroyed. But it will defeat them in such a way that positive things will come out of it. Paul said he coals a fire on their heads by doing good unto them that, yes. that, that are against you. Yes, sir. You know, and so love will conquer all things. But here's what we get into. We build walls because we are afraid to love. We fear that love is not strong enough to take on our enemies. So we build up a wall instead. Because love is not an easy thing to give. We very seldom 
want to give love to the people that we love. Come on now. Much less give love to people that we would consider an enemy. And so we don't really look at love as a, as a, as a weapon to conquer any kind of enemy. We don't look at it like that. So, so we fear that love is not strong enough to take on our enemies in this life. And so instead of trying to exert love the way God has called us to, we'll just build up a wall around that person instead. We'll just build up a wall around this instead. So that we don't have to deal with it. We don't even have to try. We'll just whatever. But in order to tear down these walls, we have to uh, let love be in operation in our lives. Right. I'm getting right close, church. I'm going to read this. And, and the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, his king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. You shall do this six days, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall, and right here, then the wall of the city will fall down flat. Yes. Amen. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. There's three tools with inside this scripture for tearing down this wall, church. Listen, we can build up walls by ourselves. You're not going to tear them down by yourself. It's yeah. not. I don't care how hard you try to do it on your own accord. We can build them up by ourselves through the flesh and whatever else. But we can't tear them down on our own. Think about it. We can't. It's not possible to do it because only God can intervene and help us in such a way. But there's three tools. Faith being number one. First and foremost. It took faith in God to trust the leadership of Joshua. It took faith to believe that Joshua was truly hearing from God. Yes. yes. It took faith to follow Joshua's commands as he was being commanded by the Lord. See, it takes faith. Yeah. Because when you start getting to what God had them do is marching around this six different times and on the seventh day doing it seven times and all these formulas and for formats that God had for them to do. Joshua, what are you talking about? It'd be easy to say... Are you sure that's God telling you to do that? That's, that's crazy. March around this six times and blow the trumpets and uh, carrying this ark of the... Come on now. And, and, and the natural mind, that would seem like... Nah. And so it took faith to believe that, that this was truly what God was asking of them. I mean, that's faith. Right. If God told, told some, some of you tonight to go out there in the street and, 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 and march up and down six times... Bring you a, a trumpet or bring you a drum and just pound it as you walk. You're going to be like, I don't know if that's really God or not. Yeah. I mean, in the natural. I mean, that's just not, that's bizarre. Because that's how God works. God takes things that we would just look at as, whoo, man. And that's what He uses most of the time. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been praying for people before and feel like God has asked me to, well, just go stand up on top of that pew and pray for it. Why? Why would I stand up on top of the pew to pray for somebody? But see, that's just those little obedient things. That God is just trying to get us to obey. That's all it is. It's just to, to test our faith and our obedience if we'll, just, if we'll do it. And, and I know that sounds simple and it sounds funny. But sometimes God calls us to do things that in our natural mind we think would be silly. But God wants us to do it to test our faith and our obedience unto Him. So it took faith being number one. Mm -hmm. Number two was obedience. They obeyed the Lord by following the formula in which He had given to them. You know, that formula was the whole marching around six times. Right. You know, that, that was the formula that God gave them at that moment. Yes. Amen. And they had to obey that or else be disobedience unto the Lord. Yeah. And so, obedience was number two. They marched around with the Ark of the Covenant. I'm going I'm to put a little note in this. The Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God, like I mentioned earlier. We cannot accomplish anything without His presence. Right. I want you to notice that tonight. 
the Ark of the Covenant was, it was mentioned several times. And the priest took the Ark of the Covenant. And it goes on and it says, and it comes back to that. And they had the Ark of the Covenant. And they went before the Ark of the Lord. And it just keeps mentioning that as we read our text tonight. Amen. It was to show us that, listen, every, anything that's going on right here today, the presence of the Lord is right there in the midst. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So anything that, that God is calling us to do or whatever, it is, His presence better be in the midst. Because yes. Amen. without His presence, nothing can be accomplished. Right. right. Yes. right. And so they was in the process of trying to tear down these walls. Listen, if the presence of God was not involved, it wouldn't have mattered how many times they blew that trumpet. It wouldn't have mattered how many times they marched around that place. If His presence was not involved, if they did not have the Ark of the Covenant at, at, you know, on them at that time, it would not have probably even worked. Right. Because His presence in the midst is what allowed all that to come together right. and, and, and come to pass. Amen. That the miracle Amen. of them walls collapsing could, could even take place. Yes. His presence made that work. So I wanted to add that in there so you know that. Good. And then the third one was praise, church. They blew the trumpets. And then they, right there on the seventh day, they shouted that great shout. Yeah. 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 Listen, that represents praise yeah. unto God. Yes. And so when you combine those three together, faith, obedience, and praise within the presence of God, Miracle. those walls come down, church. Yes. Amen. Miracles happen. Yes. They don't just have to be the walls. I mean, any situation. Yes. Amen. You know. Amen. But in this particular case, them walls that separate you from the territory to claim will come down. Yes, they will. But see, it goes on and says uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Hallelujah. Faith being number one, church. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when you combine all those together, <sighs> listen, faith and obedience and the praise of the Lord, those all go hand in hand oh, in His presence. Yes. Yes. Being yes. what's backing all of it up. Yes. yes. We start operating in faith, obedience, and praise sincerely in this place on a high level where God's presence is moving. Oh, man. These walls might come down. <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> I mean, God will, I mean, I really believe that we see things, you know, really on a, on a higher level. And, um, Love is what possesses the territory, church. All those things tear down the walls, but love is what allows you to go in and claim that territory. All right, yeah. Stand with me all over this house tonight, Hallelujah. church. Hallelujah. Good work. I want us to get that tonight. Love. Love really is the answer for everything when it comes to living this life for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And love is really one of the hardest things to probably live out. Sometimes it's easier than other times, I understand. But, but overall, love is a hard thing to, to give. Because so many people and so many things, you know, come against us and, and, and do us the wrong way. And it's just so hard to, you know, how do you love something like that? But love is what allows us to claim them territories that God has for us. Amen. Sometimes our enemy is standing off. Man, that's what I wrote down. Sometimes our enemies, what we would consider enemies, they're standing in the midst of the territory that God wants us to have. The promises that God has for us, the blessings that God has for us, sometimes our enemies is standing in the midst of us, or in the midst of those things. And we have a, a, an opportunity to either let love take that enemy out so we can have that territory, or we can build up a wall and walk away from it. There you go. Good. I mean, choice is ours. Right. Remember how I said at the beginning of the message, God has given us the land, but it's up to us to possess it. Amen. Love is what allows us to possess the land. That's it. Amen. And so let's pray tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. Lord, thank you for this word. It's a little yeah. bit different tonight, God. Thank you, Lord. But I would thank you for the word. I pray that you'll help us, God, to let you come in, God, and help us tear down these walls, Lord. Yes, Lord. We can't do it by ourselves, God. Only you Hallelujah. can. Hallelujah. And Lord, everybody that is in existence today has some point in their life built up walls, God, to try to keep the enemy out or, or to try to, you know, block themselves away from feeling any more pain or whatever it might be, Thank God. You, Jesus. Yeah. But Lord, we need to tear down them walls Amen. so that way we can get to that land that you're wanting us to possess, yes, God. Lord. The Amen. territories, those promises and blessings, God, the things that you want for us. We've got to be able to get to those things, Lord. And so Lord, help us to tear down them walls. We might be able to go there and take our possessions yes, back from the yes, enemy, Lord. Yes. 
And God, I just pray that you'll just let this word really saturate us tonight, God, as we leave here tonight. And God, we just give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you for watching this video that was brought to you by Joy Christian Ministries. If you're ever in the area, come experience God with us. Our service times are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., Sunday evenings at 7 p.m., and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. And our address can be found at the bottom of this screen. Thank you for your support. We love you. God bless you.